Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shubham Sahani. I am currently an intern at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Rishikesh. And uh, I have achieved a rank of 7 in the AIMS November 2019 exam. And this was my first attempt at the exam. And I am currently uh, pursuing internship over there. So basically, uh, I gave the AIMS exam the first time this time. So I had a lot of perceptions about the AIMS exam. I had heard that it's a lot of clinical based exam and a lot of clinical things are being asked. And so was the pattern of exam this time also. So basically what I planned uh, during the AIMS preparation was that I was focusing more on the internship skills and more on gaining experience and knowledge from right from my internship thing rather than more from the bookish thing. So I guess that helps more in the long run also and during your preparation also. So I was regular with all my internship postings. I was uh, working uh, day in and day out during the internship. At the same time, I was kind of maintaining a balance between my studies. So uh, I would like to advise to everyone who is preparing for the AIMS exam that uh, you should try to focus more on learning during the clinics. So right from your third year onwards, when you like uh, enter into the world of like clinics and wards and OPDs, you should be more vigilant during that time. Like for example, if you are observing a surgery for varicocele or hydrocele, you should not just focus on the steps of the surgery or the complications of the surgery or what your clinician is telling you. Be more vigilant, observe what everyone is doing. Like for example, if you are uh, seeing a surgery and at the end of the surgery they are suturing it. So they have like closed the surgery. So you don't have to just stop there observe what are they doing. If they are putting a corrugated drain, try to ask your clinician like uh, or the surgeon, why are you doing this? What is this drain? Why are you putting this drain? What is the use of this drain? So I guess that will help you more in the long run also and during the entrance exam also. Like for example, this time there was a question on uh, Lahi's method of thyroid palpation. Last year there was a question on breast palpation. So try to analyze the pattern of the exam, right? So these things you don't revise during your preparation time because of the paucity of the time that you have. So at that time, I would say that focus more on your notes and everything, the MCQs and all. And during your formative years, try to be more clinical. The approach should be more of clinical. So uh, that would really help you like predict the questions. Like for example, next time they, uh, they might ask you about abdominal palpation or scrotal examination. So that will that way you will not only predict the questions and if they come into uh, come in the exam, that is like a plus plus for you. So it's always a win win situation if you remain clinical, right? Like many of my friends were just into the rote learning thing. They could not score that much what I have seen. But uh, I have seen that most of the students who were more clinical and uh, seeing the cases, taking more of cases and you know working during internship at the same time uh, managing their studies, they could really you know uh, have an edge over the others. So I would say that yes, if you're targeting aims, you should really visit the wards quite often, see cases and do your work in internship thoroughly, rigorously and I guess that will help you very much in the current era of examinations. So during my internship, uh, you know, the year of internship, it was quite hectic because as you know, we have to attend wards, attend OPDs, go to OTs and then come back and you know, then also you have that guilt that I have spent so much time in the ward, I'm not able to study. So trust me, have faith in yourself, that is going to help you later on also. Like uh, when I used to see my friends and you might have also experienced this, that you might have uh, as well seen your friends studying everything, you know, they are almost into the, intern the MCQ world and they're doing MCQs and I used to feel like he, I am missing out on something. I mean, there is, I mean, they are reading, 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 reading and I am only in the wards. But again, I would say that as the uh, whatever time you have, right, don't waste it. Utilize it in studying. Like for example, a normal day for internship for me would be like, I would, I would go to the ward at around like uh, 8 or 9 a.m. And then I would come back at around 5 or 4. So like uh, in between, I used to take out one or two hours like during the lunchtime or anything and uh, solve a few MCQs 
or you know uh, go through my notes so that would really help and even during that time also like for example i still remember i had my pediatrics posting and uh, they had told me to get an ultrasound done of a patient and i was like what is this why should i get the ultrasound done but then uh, during that time i started seeing the case file of the patient and uh, i opened uh, like my app and i started solving mcqs of neonatal hepatitis and that really i had two patients uh, for whom i had to get the ultrasound done and one had neonatal hepatitis and the other had cholestasis so i solved the mcqs there itself only i saw the ultrasound image that was being uh, done by the radiologist and that really you know built my concept for that topic and that topic was prepared for me so never think that that is not going to help and like i i used to return around 5 or 6 uh, or sometimes even later during the hectic postings and then after coming back i used to quickly revise i had kept i had made a proper schedule like from this week to this week i have to do this uh, subject from this week to this week this subject so that way i was like obviously see please remember you're never going to stick to your schedule because you're going to falter because that is what is human nature but at least if you're doing 60 to 70 or maybe 80% of that syllabus during that week suppose you've kept one week for say ENT if you're able to do even 80% during that week with your internship on i guess that's a pretty decent thing the rest 20% you can manage during your revision time so that will uh, i guess that way you should prepare and uh, like after coming back around 5 or 6 or 7 then i used to like uh, read some notes notes or like during the hectic postings i used to give some test or just solve the mcqs and then go back to sleep and then uh, again the day would start so i guess that way you should prepare that never feel disheartened that i don't have time i'm not able to concentrate on the studies because uh, ultimately many of the uh, like people they are able to crack during their internship and hectic internships trust me so it's not that big a deal if i can other toppers can you also can so i guess that way you should always motivate yourself that Uh, i am preparing myself for becoming a good clinician later on and it will help me later on also so sometimes uh, like as i said that if you are able to complete 70 to 80% of the syllabus during that week that is sufficient but please stick try to stick to your schedule so suppose if you have left say like uh, maybe 10 pages or 15 pages of your notes which you could not do during that those 15 days uh, during those uh, that one week so leave ent for that time right don't let ent or any uh, any other subject you know spill over for the next week because then it might as well eat up your next week also and uh, god forbid you're not able to even complete that subject later on that next week also then you will feel like i have spent two weeks on this particular subject i'm not able to do it so leave it for that time leave it to god and then next time when you're revising or next time when you have some time in between try to you know uh, uh, re- go through those notes and complete that particular thing but please try to make a schedule especially during your internship time because uh, you know like the difficulty that i faced was that initially i had very hectic postings so i was not able to stick to the schedule so i left it like for one two months i was like i'm not i will not be able to do it and i left it then i realized that if i'll probably if i make a schedule i might as well be able to follow it some like the partially or only but i would be able to do it so then i made a schedule and then i was pretty much able to stick to it and that schedule followed up till around october or something and then i revised it so during the revision i was doing that those 20% that i had missed which i was not able to do during that initial time plus also revise that 80% that I had already studied so it's all a matter of revision revision and revision so during the end time you should you know focus mainly on revision i guess So uh, right from the starting of my 6th semester I had this in mind that I have to go to AIMS or PGI and you know that matlab I had that thing in mind ki like uh, matlab I could not get into AIMS during my UG year so I have to get to AIMS New Delhi during my PG so that kind of motivation that i had i guess that motivated motivated me further to uh, like study right from the starting of my 6th semester initially during like my first and second years uh, i was into more of standard books i was reading everything right i was retaining it then again you know uh, reproducing it during the exams and you know that way it was going on but like i guess my preparation for post graduate entrance exam started around 6th semester so around this from 6th semester till the end of my final year i was was making all my notes i was at the same time reading the standard textbooks see reading standard textbooks is really really important right so suppose you have all your notes made right everyone has notes 
what is the difference how what is that edge that will give you over the others so that will be those standard textbooks right so just imagine like you have that same set of material everyone has that material what is that extra golden coin that you can add to your piggy bank which will like later on uh, yield good results so that thing i guess is standard textbooks and your clinics so at the same time i was going through all the standard textbooks I was underlining uh, everything important there itself in the book and the things which I felt could also be asked in the post graduate entrance exams I was adding it to my notes those notes which were, I was already uh, side by side preparing so like I, for example if I have to read medicine this weekend so I'll be uh, making the notes of uh, that particular say topic of cardiology or neurology and then I would read that same topic from my standard textbook and then i would add some important points to my notes itself so that i guess helps you later on because that will give you an extra edge over the others if you have to crack an entrance exam like aims or pj or for neat also that matter so uh, that standard textbook thing i was doing at that time then uh, i guess that continued till final year so um, and in fact during my final year also i was during the pre preparation of my final professional exams i was reading those notes only for my preparation because that those notes had everything that was given to me by the faculty uh, who know everything what is important what is not important and also i had added my own extra nuggets to that thing so that had a the, i had a comprehensive set of notes by the end of final year now during my professional pre professional exams i revised it like once then during professional exams i revised it again so by the end of final year i guess mainly the clinical subjects i had revised twice or thrice so i had that thinky now i am almost uh, like halfway uh, through my preparation then uh, during my internship when internship started i focused mainly on the first and the second year subjects because they were mainly my lacune so then i prepared their notes at that time some of the standard textbooks i could go through some of them i could not go through so again that is important because during internship you'll not be able to go through the standard textbooks all over again so if you have done that in your formative years i guess that would really be helpful so during the internship i was mainly revising those notes whichever i had revised already twice or thrice and the first and second year subjects i was revising uh, making the notes revising them at the same time doing a couple of mcqs and then when i had this in mind ki now i have all the notes i have revised it once twice or thrice then i started to test myself i had joined test and discussion and i was mainly focusing on testing myself because see ultimately uh, obviously it will matter how much preparation you have how much knowledge you have but ultimately it's a competitive exam what you are targeting is that you have to reach at the apex of the pyramid and basically you have to like crack that entrance exam so you have that knowledge well accepted very good that is necessary but again testing yourself is very important so you should give a lot of tests mock tests and all grand tests and everything so that you know how to manage your time well right so i gave a i think i gave less number of grand tests but if you can i guess you should give a lot of grand tests because that will not only uh, tell you what are the important topics because see in this era mainly the topics are getting repeated it's not the mcqs ver uh, verbatim per se that are going to be repeated so basically you have to uh, you know know the important topics like for example as i said there was question on uh, palpation of uh, breast last time this time thyroid so you should know ki what is the pattern of the exam what the examiner is going through what is the uh, like mental frame of the examiner like in pgi every year they are asking a question on kawasaki disease so you know that kawasaki disease is important maybe that same question is not going to be repeated next time but you know that kawasaki is being repeated so i'll read that maybe from multiple sources and add it to my notes so that it will help you in the main exam because ultimately topics are very important so those gts and mock tests and test tnds they will help you to uh, for the time management and also they will tell you the important topics so they are very very important in your preparation during your internship i would say mainly focus on testing yourself again and again evaluate yourself because i guess testing is the uh, most efficient mode of evaluating yourself and also preparation when when you have scarcity of time so as i was talking about grand tests many a times after giving the grand test or the mock test you will feel like 
कि आई हैव गॉट सच अ वर्स रैंक आई गेव इट ऑल आई कुड राइट प्रॉबेबली मतलब देर इज अ थिंग इन साइकेट्री ओवर जनरलाइजेशन सो यूल ओवर जनरलाइज कि इफ आई कुड नॉट गेट अ गुड रैंक इन मॉक टेस्ट आई वुड ऑल्सो नॉट गेट अ गुड रैंक नाइदर इन एम्स नॉर इन पी जे आई नॉर इन नीट सो आई गेस दैट परसेप्शन नीड्स टू चेंज एंड दैट इज वाई यू नो आई एम देर टू हेल्प यू सी द थिंग इज दैट मेनी अ टाइम्स लाइक आई ऑल्सो फेस दिस लाइक आई गॉट अ वेरी बैड रैंक ड्यूरिंग द एम्स मॉक एग्जाम आई फेल दैट आई कुड नॉट डू इट एंड दैट इज कमिंग लाइक जस्ट टू वीक्स बिफोर द एम्स एग्जाम now at that time you cannot afford to lose confidence your entire preparation right there is it will all go futile so those mock tests will always be there to teach you they will tell you how like for example you try to evaluate yourself why you could not perform well in that grand test or that mock test so like i gave a mock test i got a very bad rank i felt very bad i felt depressed ki i could i, I could not do it and uh, aims is just two weeks away and i can also not do it but i guess then uh, matlab i talked to my parents right a- any time you feel depressed talk to your parents have a good set of friends right i had a very good study partner so with the, uh, with whom i discussed everything i evaluated the entire paper i saw what all mistakes i did what all i could have averted so during my analysis right analysis is very important so during my analysis i found that i had very uh, less number of attempts so the next time i gave the mock uh, one week before the exam i attempted a lot more i got a better rank and during the main aims exam i attempted a lot more and i got a very good rank so i guess that is where you know the evaluation part and the mistakes part is very important during mock tests they are just to guide you and also the mistakes that you do, do during mock tests or gts or tnds you will always remember them right the things that you do right you will not remember them but the things that you do uh, wrong will always you know have that place in your brain in your hippocampus and you'll always remember ki why did i do that thing wrong so uh, don't be depressed right talk to your parents talk to your friends and i guess matlab uh, everything happens for a good reason if you're getting a bad rank during the mock exam uh, trust me the you'll matlab if you work on it now you'll get a very good rank later on so take that as another attempt take it as an opportunity that i have like this has given me an, another opportunity to you know uh, reach near my dream and you will sail through trust me you will sail through so see i would also like to reiterate here itself that revisions form a key part of your preparation just reading it once and then leaving it for god knows anything is not it's not going to help you later on revision is a plays a very important role uh, in your preparation so i would say like i am a slow reader it all depends on you many people are slow reader <laughs> i am just like you only i i look i take a lot of time to read a topic consolidate it understand it then you know revise it so it takes me a couple of good amount of time to like uh, do any topic once so what i had done it was that during i had a very long like uh, around 6 7 months of initial preparation the first part first revision as you say the first reading so during that time i was reading it slowly revising it doing mcqs again revising it so you know like uh, around one and a half month before the exam i had almost done with the first revision now it might seem that uh, like it's too late for a first revision but if i've done something you know properly once i guess the next time you will do it at a much faster pace so i would say that the first revision i did was like this and uh, i found this a perfectly uh, fine you know uh, schedule and during the last i had one and a half month left before the exam so that w- the initial one month i was revising it again so that was kind of my second revision or you would say the second reading then during the last 15 days or 10 odd days i had revised it again so i guess i had a couple of two or maybe three revisions done before the exam and i guess that is sufficient if you don't have time during your internship because that is the best you could manage even if you're not able to do the third revision see uh, it's all a matter of those five and a half years right if you're not able to revise anything don't think that matlab i'll fail i'll fail because the, those five and a half years do matter and god is watching that if you've studied for five and a half years no matter if you're not if you're not able to revise during the last few days still also it's okay just give the exam with full confidence the same confidence that you had during the starting of the year that i can and you will so i guess that will uh, really help you later on so during the first reading right 
there is always a tendency among people to add new things to your notes you know medicine is like a plethora of knowledge you feel like i should add this also i've seen this from one source i should add this also i've done this mcq i should add this also this question came in this particular rare question came in jipmer in 1999 so i'll add this also to my notes but i guess you should restrict yourself right because as i told you revision is the most important thing so you, as our parents say you should read only that much which you can swallow so you should read only that much which you can revise so there's no use of studying lot many things and then not being able to revise at the second time so then all your preparation goes futile the entire 6 7 months that you spent on swallowing and digesting that information if that's going to flush out of the drain then what is the use of reading at the, it at the first time so uh, restrict yourself right again one thing second thing keep a deadline like for example i had kept a deadline that beyond this time like after my first reading the day i ended my first reading i had decided i am not going to add anything new to my notes whatever is there is there if the exam has to come it should come from there only or it will not come so that was my strategy i had a lot of these apprehensions that i don't have this in my notes what if this comes i this particular boy is reading this thing this particular girl is reading this thing i have not read it so you should at some point you should restrict yourself adding is good but restrict yourself you know uh, then after that once you've restricted yourself from adding new information revise that same thing right you could add a bit of updates if you can like if you found some faculty has put up an update you can maybe add that thing so because you know updates are very important during the end time of your preparation because most of the updates have to come at that time only at that crucial time and you are like ki there are so many updates so follow the faculty look at the updates maybe add a few updates to your notes but that's it during the revision time you are not going to read anything new just your notes no guide books nothing and revise it maybe you do couple of mcqs and do the previous year questions so that is most important during the end part of preparation please restrict yourself at some time so many times during preparation you will feel like ki i am not remembering this falana thing which i studied on this particular day of february 2019 and i am not able to recall it so at that time you have to remember that revision time is going to come right don't go back and you know fall back to this thing ki i'll revise it again right now only because that will eat your time for the next week also so you can re- any time revise the volatile things like for example if you're in the words right you remembered some translocations and there were funny funny mnemonics that you made you know you can always uh, go through those mnemonics or those uh, you know those important points during your word postings or you know while you are eating or while you are hanging out with friends so that will you know given a given edge over the others so i would say that uh, one advice i would i would always give to uh, everyone is that prepare one another set of notebook apart from your 19 notebooks that you have right so what and keep on adding the most volatile points to that notebook like i had made a couple of pages in which i used to write like pathology and all the volatile things that are there in pathology the translocations right the genes and everything that scares everyone so i used to write them on that page on that a4 sheet and i used to staple them in my notes only so what will that help you is that it will help you in a quick revision suppose you don't have time uh, of for revision during the end time like i had emergency posting during the end time i was not able to revise the entire syllabus so i had those pages i had that notebook in which i i could go through all the most volatile things that are there because concepts you anyway would remember but the most volatile things are the things that might make a difference if you're not able to revise them towards the end so i would say prepare a small crisp notebook in which uh, add all the most volatile things of all the topics the ipcs the genes and you know uh, some new drugs that are not able to remember all the funny names that you read just add them don't make it too voluminous and ke- you can revise them any time like any free time that you have during your preparation time suppose you have da- completed ophthalmology two days prior to your schedule you can revise that notebook so that will help you and uh, coming to the revision part uh during the like the first revision that I was having after 6 to 7 months of first reading i was feeling that i am not able to recall this also this was so basic knowledge i used to know this during my formative years ug time and i was thinking ki i am not even able to remember this how can i remember the big big
big things that are going to come in the exam so at that time uh, you know trust me it happens with everyone if i'm saying it happens with me i have talked to a lot of people it happens to everybody and if it is happening you're on the right track because if you are not remembering something it's a good sign at least you studied it you are better off than someone who did not even study it for the first time so the next time that you're going to read na trust me it will take half of the time that you it took you uh, to study it at the first place and uh, so and also during the end time if you have a uh, if you have this you know option of having a study partner or doing group study with your couple of good positive friends try to do that because you know that helps you in quick revision during the end time and that will also like give you confidence that he also does not remember this i also do not remember this so it's a because ultimately you're competing with everyone right so uh, that way it will help you in quicker revision it will give you confidence boost confidence that that i no one remembers so it's a win win situation and during revision time you can you know add upon those things and also if you think that you're not able to uh, recall anything right always remember that revision time is yet to come those one and a half months give it your best revise everything and then you will be able to reproduce it during the exam doing previous years plays a really important part in your preparation so if you are doing thousands of mcqs and you know uh, you end up thinking that the exam is going to come from this i am sorry you are mistaken but if you do the previous years especially during the last time when you have uh, scarcity of time if you do the previous year mcqs na trust me a lot of things are going to come from them so like this year i guess there were four to five direct repeats from previous years or you know a slight teeny bini uh, difference uh, which were made from the previous year mcqs but uh, those five six mcqs you can just you know hit them on you can get them exactly right then the other mcqs you know they were kind of topic repeats from what had been asked in the previous years so i like uh, for aims exam i had planned on doing uh, like mcqs from 2016 year onwards i could not do it but uh, the like i would say that do at least the previous 3 or if you can 4 year papers which includes both the sessions the may as well as the november session and not only do the mcqs try to extract information from them like for example uh, if some topic is being asked more than once in the previous years that means there's a uh, like there's a high probability that that topic is going to be repeated the next time also so if it is repeated or if it is not repeated that is not in your hands but what you can do is that go through the explanation part of that mcq try to open your notes and then go through that topic again because uh, the topics as i said i'm i'm going to reiterate they are very important and the topic repeats you know they are something which you can only get to know once you do the previous year mcqs so i started doing previous year mcqs only during the last 15 days because i had thought that if i'll do it during the end time i'll maybe remember it more and also uh, that will help me in my revision so what i was basically doing is during the last 10 15 odd days i was going through the previous year paper suppose i i have decided that today i have to revise pathology so first initial part of the day i used to go i used to go through all the mcqs of pathology that have been asked in the previous 3 or 4 papers then i used to know all the topics that are important then during the initial part of the day i used to revise mainly those topics that have been asked once or twice in the aims exam and the rest of the topics i used to leave it for the end of the day so that if god forbid i don't have time for them at least i have done the most high yield information and during the last few weeks the high yield information really matters so i would say that all those people who are targeting neat the coming neat you should also go through the previous year mcqs at least the previous 3 to 4 year mcqs minimum uh, the question papers maybe subject wise maybe paper wise as per your preference and know the topics extract those to- extract those topics write it on a piece of paper and then revise those topics again and again like uh, one thing that i used was that uh, prep ladder has given a list of important topics for each subject so i was really stuck on one particular subject i was not able to complete the notes of that subject so i was thinking that uh, if i leave this subject i will not be able to you know tackle the mcqs that are there in that subject so i went through all the topics that are there 
in the important list of topics on the prep ladder website and i did at minimum i did at least i guess 70 to 80 percent of those topics and i guess i fared really well in that subject so that way you can prepare your own list of topics from the previous year or you can look at uh, the topics that are given by prep ladder and then try to revise at least those because again high yield information will only help you So as you all might be knowing that uh, AIMS has really changed the pattern of its uh, examination, right, from the May session. So now you have not just the single best response types, but you also have the matching, uh, the match the following type of questions, the extending matching questions, and you know, uh, the image base, the video base, and it seems a lot. But trust me, if you have done a topic really nice at the first place, no matter whatever the pattern is, no matter they ask it, in extended matching, multiple true and false, assertion reason. If you know the topic, if you have read the topic, you can tackle any kind of question, you know, really well because that's what I feel. Because there's no single way of preparing for assertion reason questions, right? There are, I guess, m the millions of topics which can be asked uh, in that assertion reason. So we're not going to re go through each and every topic thinking that assertion reason will come from this or this. So have a broader approach, a wide approach, study your notes, and then you'll be able to tackle any kind of question. So talking about the exam taking strategy, see, whatever you have studied during the entire year or your five and a half years, if, you have, if you're not attempting the paper well, your entire preparation will go futile. So uh, like what I did was before the exam, I had say 20, 30 odd minutes, which I was just sitting idle looking at the screen. Everyone was looking here and there, but I thought, at that time, I uh, figured everything out in my mind that I'll do this particular question to this particular question in this particular time. And I'll do these questions before, these questions afterwards. So I had made a pretty good figure in my mind that that's how I'm going to manage my time. I was definitely not able to do that because again, I had not given that much mock tests to, you know, realize that time management is that important. So mock tests will help you in time management and that will really reflect in the main exam. So I had basically uh, the single best response types, there were, I guess, around 150 questions in single best response. So I had attempted around 148, I guess, or 147. I had attempted 148 questions in the single best response. And uh, don't think that I knew all those 148 questions, right? See, AIMS is an exam where you have to take some risks. If you don't take the risks, uh, if you play safe, like you only mark what you know, right? You might get a, an average rank or a lower than average rank. If you attempt very high, there are two chances. Either you will get a lot of negatives and get a very, very, very bad rank, okay. or if, you're, if luck is on your side and if you have studied, luck will always be on your side. You might as well get all or maybe, you know, 50 or 60% of them right and then you will be on the top. So you have to take that risk, right? Ames has very less number of seats and if you are ready to take that risk, Ames is waiting for you. So what I was doing during the questions was I was eliminating the options, right? You will never know the exact answer. And even if you know the answer, beware, don't mark it at the first place. Try to eliminate the options. So if there are four uh, options uh, like in the single best response, rule out. You think D is definitely not the answer, rule out D. Now uh, we are left with A, B and C. You don't think that B might as well fit the answer, rule out B. Now you're left with A and C. Now it's a very tricky gamble kind of situation. If you are, uh, if you think that you are confused between two options and you think that you have studied that topic and subconsciously you think it's one of them, just go ahead and mark it, right? Because you might as well get it right. If you get it wrong, you have a lot of positive score from which that negative will be deducted. So it won't make that much of a difference. But uh, if you get it right, you know, by God's grace, then you will be having plus one. And that plus one that you'll be getting, that will not be, you know, uh, valid for those people who did not attempt uh, that question. So that will, you know, really help you boost your final score because ultimately, as I said, it's a matter of competition. So single best response, I would say, go aggressive, mark as much as you can. Look, again, barring say one, two, three, or maximum five, you can leave, which you really don't know at all, you know, then you can leave it. Otherwise, you eliminate options, try to mark as much as you can. Now, coming to the dicey situation, the new pattern question. Now, they have a lot of negative marking. Like, for example, for some questions, there is plus one and there is minus one. So, beware in those questions, just mark what you know. Like, for example, what they say in PGI exam, mark what you know. So, only mark those questions which you think 
you are hundred percent sure because if you get it right, you'll get a plus one. But if you get it wrong, you'll get a minus one. So that is where I guess you will be caught up, and that will really reduce your score because minus one is a big thing. It's just minus one by three in the single best response. Here it's a minus one. So just mark what you know. If you feel that you're eighty percent confident about a question, go ahead and mark it. But if for anything less than maybe a fifty or sixty percent not sure, you're unsure about that, just leave it because ultimately they're not going to matter. Because I left a couple of questions during the new pattern exam, uh, the new pattern questions because I was not sure about it. But the I knew that I had a good positive score uh, to you know relish upon during the uh, single best response, so that did not matter that. That much, and the results turned out fine. So just, I guess, I would say, just mark what you know in the new pattern exam questions, and go aggressive in the single best response. At the same time, keeping a track of the time that you have, because like uh, I could not attempt four questions. I left them unvisited during the exam because I did not have time for doing them. So please don't do that because it's a big regret kind of situation. Because ultimately you will think that I knew that question still I could not even attempt it because that's a worse situation than not attempting a question. So just uh, in the starting of the exam, just have a just breathe in uh, deeply, breathe out deeply, think how you're going to attempt it, manage your time well. Like three hours is a good enough time, but again this time there were two eighty-eight questions, which I guess were a huge number. So you have to kind of uh, you know figure out your time well during that time, and if you manage your time well and give the exam your best shot, you will definitely come through. So many students now must be thinking that uh, like I've started a bit late. now many months have passed by i've not done anything in in my internship i've not studied well during my formative years now what to do now see uh, there's no use crying over spilt milk whatever has gone has gone suppose you have you had decided that i'll have one month uh, one year to prepare for the exam and if at all you have wasted 2 3 months there's no use wasting another 8 months thinking i wasted those one or two months right so please don't repeat the same mistake that you did during your mbbs time thinking that semester exams are pretty far i'm I, i'll study at the end then thinking at the end uh, i did not study initially so now you have another one year right or maybe 6 months or whatever time you have just give it your best shot right uh, and trust me it's not that only uh, central institute people are going to crack aims or something like that right aims is an exam which is testing your clinics right clinics you are getting in every college that you are there so if you are thorough with your concepts thorough with your standard textbooks or thorough with your notes for that matter and thorough with your clinics you are definitely going to come to aims right so never think that i cannot right and if you are thinking that i am uh, i i have not revised this much i am forgetting everything i i i am not able to do the mcqs i have not done sufficient number of mocks so please remember your goals don't care how you feel it's you if you have to reach your goal the same goal everyone is having right so you have to give it your extra edge your best you know your best effort that you can so don't cry over spilt milk just think i still have that those golden 8 months or like whatever time that you have and you can still make through like i was telling you about myself i started a bit late during internship still it turned out pretty fine right now when i introspect i feel why was i even crying for another 8 months that i have wasted 2 months so just forget about the past start afresh every day is a new beginning right that new beginning is waiting for you and aims is waiting for you so all the best to everyone who's preparing and i know you will